Hey guys, Steve here at SKS Props. Today we're going to be building the chainsaw from Warhammer 40K. Welcome to the shop. If you're new to the channel, be sure to hit that subscribe button because I'm going to be coming back with lots more tips and tricks for prop and costume fabrication. Today's build, we're going to be making a Warhammer 40K chainsaw. Now, the chainswords are by far one of the coolest melee weapons within the 40k universe, and they're wielded by different factions of space marines throughout the Empire. Now, this particular one I'm going to be making will be by the Blood Angels, and why is that? Because ultramarines suck. Now, this particular build is made all out of HD foam, so it's extremely light. More importantly, it is con safe. I'm going to show you guys the tips and tricks that it took to put all this together. We got a lot to do, so... Let's get started. The first thing I did was print off the template that I had created in Photoshop. If you guys want to try this build out yourselves, there's a link for the template over in the description section. Now because of the size of this build, I know that it needs some kind of core, so I've decided to use a cardboard tube which will run through the handle up to the motor section. Blocks of 10mm HD foam are cut out on a bandsaw. These will be stacked and added as detail elements for the handle of the chainsaw. Using the templates as a guide, I transfer the shape of the handguards onto some 10mm HD foam and then cut all those shapes out on the bandsaw. A lot of this build is going to be stacking layers to bulk it out. Here I'm taking all the additional details that are on the handguard, cutting those out on a separate piece of 10mm foam and then gluing that to the ones that we cut out previously. When I started the chainsaw, I didn't really know how thick the handguard was going to be. So adding these pieces layer by layer really helps me control the scale of the prop. I decided to go ahead and add a few details to the inside of the handguard now because once I add the handle, it's going to be a lot less accessible. Using a Forstner bit, I'm able to drill a hole through the foam, making room for the cardboard handle. Here I'm making sure everything lines up just like it's supposed to. We're dealing with multiple layers of 10mm HD foam at this point, so I take it over the belt sander to flush everything out. This also gives me the opportunity to go ahead and start knocking down all of the hard edges using a medium grit sanding drum on my Fordham and a stone bit to help cauterize and round over all those pieces. After the refinement by the rotary tools, I then sand everything by hand using some 400 grit sandpaper. Once again, because we're dealing with multiple layers of 10mm foam, I'm going to be using some 2mm to actually skin the surface. To apply this, I'm going to be using some barge cement and Bob Smith super glue. This type of skinning method is something I do a lot in foam fabrication. You always want to be mindful of where your seams are and the best way to cover them up. Since we've got everything pretty much blocked out, additional details can start being added. In this case, I'm making small strips of 10 millimeter foam. And to make these circles, I actually dremel down some PVC pipe and then twist that into the surface of the foam. 10 millimeter HD foam half rounds are used to detail the top section of the handguard. To give this handle a leather wrap look, I am cutting strips of 2 millimeter foam and adhering that to the cardboard tube. The end of the wrap is cut at an angle and glued into place. 15 millimeter half rounds are used to fill the gaps at the top and bottom of the handle while also giving an additional detail. With the handle complete, we can start working on the main body of the chain sword. Here I'm taking my template and transferring that onto some 10mm HD foam with a ballpoint pen. To ensure that I get perfect 90 degree angles, I cut these pieces out on the bandsaw. I check the alignment with the cardboard tube on the first piece that I've cut out to make sure I've got enough clearance before I cut out the second side. I glue 1 inch strips of 10mm foam to the inside of both halves. This will both help strengthen and bulk out the section of the chain sword. I take one more strip of 10mm HD foam, glue both halves together, and now I can check it with a handle to make sure everything's lining up just right. Because this blade is so long, for further stability, I decided to glue in some 5 gallon paint stir sticks. Now these things are great because you can pick them up for free at Lowe's. Adding these stir sticks really ensured that the blade would not wobble and that it would retain its shape. Just like the handle, we're dealing with multiple layers of 10mm foam here, so I'm taking some 2mm and skinning the top so it all looks like one piece. Now the trick here is ensuring that my contact adhesive gets applied all at once, so I'm using my table as a guide to help lay down the 2mm foam. I use a small PVC pipe to apply even pressure to the entire surface. 
I start bulking up the motor section of the chainsaw by gluing down pieces of 6 and 10 millimeter HD foam. Curved pieces of foam and 10 millimeter half rounds are used to simulate the inside of the motor. Now most of this is going to be covered up by the next layer, but it's cool just to know that it's in there. For the plate that covers the motor, I want it to be all one piece. So I take my template, add about half an inch in the middle, and then flip that for the opposite side. This should give me enough clearance for it to cover the entire top half of the chainsaw. To create the vents at the top of this plate, I use a Forstner bit and drill a hole into each end and then take an X-Acto blade and cut out the main portion. These vent cutouts are cleaned up with a rotary tool, checked for fit, and then glued into place. A 20mm HD foam half round is glued to close off the bottom section of the sword. Next we're going to start working on the embellishments on the side of the chain sword. These are going to be detailed out with 6mm HD foam. Using the score and heat technique, I'm able to create a small detail panel on the side. Once again, the fumes that come off of this are not good for you, so make sure that you're wearing a respirator and work in a well-ventilated area. I use this same technique to make the wings that go on either side, again lightly scoring it with a knife and then hitting it with a heat gun. You want to be careful not to burn the foam, but if you do it just right, you get some amazingly clean detail lines. Using my template as a reference, I just start making all the raised foam details for the side of the sword. The eagle's wings for the end of the sword are done in the same way. They are cut out of some 10mm HD foam and then glued into place. The raised section at the lip of the sword has a slight bevel to it and I'm able to create this by using my table router. Lining it up with the very edge of the chain sword, this strip is glued into place. Before I add the teeth, I go in with a medium sanding drum and a stone bit and clean up all the edges. By using a sanding block and making sure that everything is square, I'm now able to add my final 2mm strip to the bottom of the chain sword. The teeth were traced onto some 10mm foam cut out on a bandsaw and then glued to a strip of 10mm foam. This would ensure that I could keep proper spacing between all of the teeth. A small section of 10mm HD foam round dowel was glued into place to act as a fuel line. Once in place, some 2mm foam was glued on as additional detail. 20mm round dowels are sanded down and glued onto the handguard. At this point, the chain sword is just about done. It's very, very clean. I'm really happy with how it's looking. Once again, because I'm going with the Blood Angels theme on this, I would like the blood drop on the side, so I create that by transferring my template onto some 2mm and 6mm HD foam. The blood drop was then sanded down to give it a nice gradual curve and glued into place. I glue on some resin cast half spheres to simulate rivets. 10mm half round and some 6mm foam finish off the pommel. Battle damage is added to the chain sword using a rotary tool. This makes it look as though it is not brand new but has seen many victories throughout the galaxy. I do a final heat treatment and sand it with some 400 grit sandpaper before I add tiny googly eyes as small rivets. Alright guys, we are completed with the fabrication side of the chain sword. Now it's time to get on to the hand painting portion of it. And to prep it for that, I did two coats of Plasti Dip, and that will seal the foam and protect it. Um, after that had fully cured, I did some Krylon Red Rust Primer, and then in a couple spots, I hit it with some hammered metal from Rust-Oleum. Now, all of this was allowed to dry overnight. I will now start to hand paint the process using Liquitex Heavy Body Acrylics. Of course, we're going to be going with the Blood Angels color theme here, so we're going to have a lot of red and gold accents. Uh, we still got a lot to do on this, so let's go ahead and start on the wash. The wash was a mixture of Liquitex Heavy Body Acrylics Mars Black and Burnt Sienna. This mixture was heavily watered down and then applied with a 1 inch mop brush to the prop. Some of the excess paint was dabbed away with a paper towel before a second layer was applied. This first layer it's really important to get it all over the piece because it's prepping the surface for additional layers of acrylic paint. The second layer of Mars Black and Burnt Sienna is applied to the piece, this time with less water and more pigment. To paint all the gold highlights, we're actually using Golden Brand Iridescent Bronze. This paint is watered down and applied to the surface with a half inch filbert brush. Always be thinking about color theory, so in this case if you're painting on a gold, you want red as a base to really help it pop. The biggest thing to note here is to always be careful with metallics. Normally once you get a metallic onto a matte color, it's very difficult to get that off. For layer two of the gold areas, I go back in with the iridescent bronze, this time with no water, and I'm applying it in a way to build up highlights, just as if this was one of the miniatures. 
If you also notice, I'm scrubbing the paint on more than brushing it. This will minimize brush strokes in the final piece. Liquitex Heavy Body Cadmium Free Red is the pigment I'll be using for the body. This is also applied in a circular scrubbing motion to minimize brush strokes and give it a unique texture. Returning to the gold sections to simulate a shadowed area, I'm going in with some Liquitex Heavy Body Antique Copper. This is going to be a great contrast to the iridescent bronze that we've already got laid down. This pigment is very carefully applied and feathered using a quarter inch flat brush. For the highlight sections on the gold, I go in with some iridescent rich silver. Again, the contrast to this is really good to the bronze, so here you can see the transition from the copper to the bronze to the silver really pops. The same iridescent rich silver that I'm using as a highlight on all the gold portions is also used on the metallics around the motor housing. Using primarily the side of the half inch filbert brush, iridescent rich silver is used to simulate a chipped paint technique on the red portion of the body. This is one of those applications that you can really overdo, so be selective when you're choosing where you want the metal to show through. Final highlights are applied to the spikes, and you can tell from this close-up how well those different brush techniques and colors really work together. Iridescent bronze is then applied to the metal housing on a couple of the accented strips. Now I'm going to walk you through the steps that it took to paint the blood drop jewel on the side of the chainsword. First thing to do was add a base layer of Mars Black with a quarter inch flat brush. A watery mixture of cadmium red was next applied. Now the thing to note here is these are the exact same techniques that I used to paint jewels on the miniatures. And it's all about subtle layers. So after each layer dries, I then add a little less water, a little more pigment, and apply a new layer. Keeping the theme of it being dark at the top and light at the bottom, I add some cadmium orange to the very bottom of the jewel. And then blend that in with the rest with just some water on a brush. A small highlight is added to the top using Liquitex parchment and a liner brush. The jewel itself is still pretty matte at this point, so I use some Vallejo gloss varnish to give it a nice sheen. I was waiting to save the teeth till last because I didn't know how gory I really wanted to make them. So in this case I've got a mixture of the cadmium red and the Mars black and I'm applying that to the teeth with a half inch mop brush. You guys can see what it takes to put together a Warhammer 40k chainsaw that is cosplay friendly. Now the details on this were pretty difficult and it's just because of the scale of the unit. Um, I'm used to building and painting ones that are about yay big. So the templates for this are free. They're over in the description section. Be sure to download those so you can try this out yourself. If you do, be sure to hit me up on Twitter and Instagram at SKS Props because I would love to see your progress. If you guys enjoyed this video, be sure to hit that like button and subscribe, and be sure to swing back by again for more tips and tutorials. Until then, thanks for stopping by.